All right. All right, guys, we're going to get started here. Uh, your time is valuable, and I want to make sure I honor that. Um, can you hear me? Everybody can hear me on the mic? Good. So I'm, I'm not a standstill type of person, so if I get to swaying, it's because I really want to be out in the front. But we're, we're recording this live, so I want to make sure that the, the camera receives my voice. Um, my name is Therese Wilson, um, a former graduate of U of M, class of 2008, came here from Little Rock, Arkansas in 2004. Um, and today what we're talking about is self-awareness self and personal behavior. You guys are pretty much adults. Like, you're probably like, why is this guy going to, how is this young guy going to tell me how I should conduct myself in the world? Um, so where I'm coming at this is a little bit different. And this, I'm short, so I'm going to pull this up. Is that better? Um, where I'm coming from is, um, helpful, hopefully the discussion I have with you guys helps you make better decisions. Um, because you'll know exactly who you are in this space and how you exist in this world today. Um, I came to school and I chose U of M over the University of Arkansas because there was a bowl game that season. University of Memphis had gone to their first bowl game in 34 years at the New Orleans Bowl and D'Angelo was on that team. They won, Arkansas lost, I became a Tiger. Little did I know that I made the best decision of my life. While I was here, I was a tour guide, an orientation guide, I became the mascot, um, I was, Every, I was everything under the sun, Mr. University of Memphis in 2008. I did everything here, right? So you're thinking, this dude's got all this stuff going on. He sacrificed all this time. I got involved. I was the first-gen college student. I was everything. I was the poster child for the school, literally on all the posters around here. But I get out into the workforce. Now I'm 22 with a degree. Nobody wants to hire me. Why is that so? Why is it that I can go through and do all this stuff and be successful with 20,000 people on this college? And nobody lends a hand to help me. So then I have to realize that who am I in this space? Why do I exist? Did I just get a degree to just have a degree? Did I really go to school and really not learn how to maneuver life with common sense? And I think what I want you guys to take from this is that I'm not here to be anybody's parent. That's why there's no PowerPoint. You get enough of those in class. Trust me. This is going to be feedback, one-on-one. -on -one. This is a very personal situation and the, the title of this is from pouncer to the people's champ and the reason is is because recently i've opened my own state farm right so i went from being heavily involved to working for alsac and then working for the university of memphis as a fundraiser for 11 years and now i've transitioned to being a business owner nobody in my family even went to college let alone run a business 1.85 million dollars is going to my business right now while i'm here talking to you guys I'm 33 years old. Like I, sometimes I don't even know how this stuff happens, but it's because of how you conduct yourself along the way, even during adver adversity. So I'm going to give you guys this spiel of my life and how it comes full circle because what I'm doing right now is exactly what I wanted to do when I thought I was at my lowest point. Um, graduated in 2008. Everything's going great. My major was in sports marketing, so I started working for the Memphis Grizzlies um, and the Redbirds. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Grizzlies tried to say, hey, we're going to offer you $25,000. I looked at them and I said, wait a minute. My college degree costs more than what you're offering me. That, I'd be a fool to take this offer. Granted, what I should have done probably in hindsight was say, you know what? I'm going to take that job and I'm going to hustle hard. But I knew there was a calling on my life because at this point I knew that I was supposed to be doing something a little bit more sufficient with my time and with my pockets opposed to working for the Grizzlies for $25K. So I turned that down. Well, little did I know that a reporter got a hold of the story that University of Memphis students were turning down job offers and reported what I did in the newspaper with my name attached to it, right? So it um, wasn't, a, wasn't a big thing, but it was enough for me to be like, wow, people really care that Memphis students aren't taking jobs in town. So I got a job with ALSEC, and ALSEC, I knew that they were going to open up their sports marketing department. If you guys are, are aware, they have these um, St. Jude uh, lapel pins that a lot of NBA coaches or NFL coaches wear on their attire. So knowing that this was coming down the pipeline, I'm going to go ahead and get in with ALSEC. Got in with them in Houston, Texas. Everything is going great. I moved. This is the, the, the second city I moved to in four years because I came from Little Rock here. When I get there, I meet a friend. He says, hey, I think you might be good for, for TV. It's like, ah, you know, I never thought about that. Let, let's give it a shot. Well, I go to an audition, and sure enough, his, his inkling about what he saw in me was true. So I had an opportunity to be on a show, which you guys probably don't really know much ab about now, but you probably did, 
the real world season 24, all right? So this season was shot, it was a 10 year reunion of it being shot in New Orleans. So here I am, I'm 23, fresh out of Memphis, loving it, I'm enjoying life. They flew me out to LA, they flew me out to, um, to Oklahoma City, and I had an interview with the directors in Houston. And they're like, it's gonna be between you and somebody else. And what they wanted me to do was conform to be somebody on a show, which is a reality show, but it really wasn't, to conform who I was to fit the script in the role of somebody else. And I said, nah, because at this point, I'm, I'm self-discovering who I am because I got to find out where I fit in this world after college. They called me back. I quit everything. I quit my job at ALSAC. I quit grad school at University of Houston. And they said, you're going to be the alternate. Wow. Wow, that hurts. It hurts because I gave up everything for this opportunity. And was it worth it? Yes. The whole reason I wanted that opportunity was to be able to do motivational speaking about this same thing I'm talking to you about today. And I didn't even need that, but we're going to come, we're going to come full circle with this. So I finished that opportunity and now fast forward to coming back to U of M. I interviewed with Tammy Hedges, who's now the vice president, vice president of marketing for this institution. She was the executive director of the alumni association. I majored in sports marketing and I wanted to travel the world and talk to people. I walked in for an interview and the only question she, t she asked me was, were you the mascot? I said, yes ma'am, I was. You're hired. $45,000, no experience because I was involved. $45,000 to a 24 year old is a lot of money. I don't got no kids, no house. I'm doing every, I'm chilling, like 45, 45,000 is a lot. I was putting away, I put away like $10,000 in the first three months of my, first three or four months of my paycheck. Everything was put away. So I was like, wow, this is great. But, but when you matriculate through life, you realize that 45,000 after taxes, because now we're talking about something that school doesn't so much teach you about until you're actually walking that walk. So really 45,000 after taxes was like 32,000. So I'm feeling that now as I get older. Well, an opportunity came where Tammy says, hey, I want you to be the athletic liaison. So every time the team travels to the Maui Invitational, the Old Spice Classic, anything, the Jimmy V Classic in New York, all these tournaments, you're going. It's like, I'm 20, 23, 24 years old. Why, why are you sending me? She said, because I know you have a passion for sports and I need somebody to work this because nobody else in the department wants to work it. So I've moved from Houston from a bad situation in just a split, split, split a time just like that. I now have a job back in my alma mater doing what I wanted to do in the area I wanted to be in anyway. I was fleeing from my destiny and it was always here, but I was scared of the challenge that was gonna await me. I didn't know what I was good at, but I knew I was good at everything, if that makes any sense. Like I was almost a jack of all trades because I, spread, I, I was able to spread myself out to everybody and every entity at Memphis, so much so, that I couldn't really find out who I was. So we're still going down this timeline, right? So now I'm 24, 25, I'm the, young, I'm the third youngest, um, highest paid person at the University of Memphis and I'm 26 years old, right? So I'm loving my job. I'm with, the, I'm with coach, at this time it was Coach Larry Porter and then we got Coach Fuente and then all the uh, uh, Coach Passner. I'm with these guys every day. I'm recruiting for them. I'm helping generate revenue for them. I'm helping plan events for the donors. Opportunity comes along. Hey, Therese, it's CBU calling. We want to offer you the director position of the Alumni Association here. Wow. Wow, that's great. Still, I'm still grasping who I am, but I don't quite know yet, guys, so stay with me. I get to CBU, and I go for money. No longer was passion there. I went for money, right? I go for money, and two years after being at CBU, CBU says, guess what, Therese, we're, uh, we're going to make some changes and we're getting rid of the entire alumni department. We're just gonna make everybody here a major gifts officer. So what that means is they no longer wanted to cultivate relationships with their alums. They just wanted to, the alums to have somebody to give their money to. Now, that's that school's decision. But now I'm 29 going on 30, and I've got a daughter that's about to be born, no job, married with a house, life is going good, I'm here with the roadblock. Again, I have to find my purpose. My purpose doesn't depend on money. It's what, what am I good at? What am I passionate about? So just like the first time I come back, somebody says, oh, man, you're Therese. You're hired. Now I'm back working for the University of Memphis Athletic Department with Penny Hardaway, with Coach Norvell, 
This is like, I'm like, God, Memphis has been a safety net. What, what's going on here? At every step along the way, I've learned more about how to be a professional by being in this environment at University of Memphis, which is why I want to tell you guys about how pivotal this is. To be connected to people in this entity for so long, it pays, it pays dividends. To know people while you're here. Everybody in this room right now, you should be leaving here understanding, hey, this is my name. This is what I plan to do. I look forward to interacting with you, whether it's out in the field or out in the community or out at a job or even at this event. Because you don't know where your next, who the next person is going to be when you all leave college. You're all going to leave at different times. You're all going to have different jobs and go different places. But you just don't know who's watching. So the person who is watching me is the VP of the department in athletics. I'm talking with Tom Bowen at the time. You guys know he was our former athletic director. So I'm talking with him. Hey, man, I know you went to CBU. I'm glad to have you back. Let's get to work. That was it. I was here, raised $8.2 million in a year. The next year, $8.4 million. State Farm says, hey, we see you've been raising a lot of money. You're 32 you're, I'm 31 years old at the time. You've been raising a lot of money. You've been really, you know a lot of people in Memphis. Yeah. We want to offer you an opportunity. Nah, I'm good. I'm good because I've learned now every time I get offered an opportunity, something goes wrong because I'm, I'm not fully invested in the opportunity. So they had some people reach out to me and they said, hey, Therese, we want you to understand that you have a child. You have a home and have a wife. Forget money. We're talking about flexibility and financial freedom for the rest of your life. The average State Farm agent in the state of Tennessee is the second highest grossing professional behind healthcare professionals in the state of Tennessee. The average salary for agents in the Germantown territory and the Memphis territory, which is two territories in Shelby County, $400,000 a year. I'm not saying that to recruit you guys to State Farm at all, but my name is Therese Wilson from State Farm. Let's just leave it there, right? Now, what I'm telling you is I had no experience. I didn't go to school for State Farm, guys, but I had experience with people. That, that was the whole lesson in everything I did. I didn't get a chance to do all this stuff with MTV because I had experience being on TV. They saw I had a passion for people. I didn't get the job at U of M to, with, with, with Tammy and alumni because I knew how to do the job. It was, it was experience with people. Same thing at CBU and the same thing in the athletic department. People, knowing who you are and how you relate to other people. Knowing who you are and how you exist in this space is most important. The challenge is, how do you do that? And if I told you that there's really no right or wrong answer because you know who you are, you know what things are your trigger points to help you and motivate you when no money is necessary. You know what things are that trigger you to help make sure that you're a responsible adult. You know what those things are, but sometimes we have to take time for ourselves and dig down and find out what that exactly is for us. And it took me from the age of 22 to now, here I am, 33, and I've just opened my doors three months ago for my agency. You guys probably go to Gibson's Donut all the time or Gus's Chicken. My office is right there. You'll see my sign right next to Gus's. I chose a location by the school because it seemed like I, I was getting good vibes from Memphis. I want to be as close to this school as possible forever. Now, instead of me being the person that's collecting the, the money from donors, I am a donor, and I want to make sure that I'm able to help move the needle forward for the next generation of students who are going to be caught in a situation where you go to school and you're passionate about your major, but it's not passionate about you. And that's, that's reality. And I think, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest when I say this, school is, is designed to help make sure you, that you're coachable. Well, I was tired of being coached by everybody else. I want to coach myself. State Farm give, gives me that opportunity to do that. They want young entrepreneurs and young business owners to get involved. And I'm telling you right now, I stepped in Fogelman three or four times, three or four times for classes. I mean, just, as, far as, as far as coursework is concerned. So I had three or four classes in that department. But you can't tell me that I can't run a successful business. You can't tell me that I, I don't have hustle, drive, and determination. You can't tell me I can't talk to somebody. I don't even know who you are. But we're going to have some commonality right now. So in, in, in going with that theme, the reason why this belt, and I'll pass this around, this is, I'm going to step away from the mic for those of you who are watching. So that belt symbolizes a bunch of things. Um, I'm 33, but I'm childish. I like to have fun. 
Um, I enjoy wrestling. I enjoy comics. I enjoy everything that's pop culture from the 80s, late 80s and 90s. That's all me. I love it. Don't be confused by my, my apparel and my attire right now. So um, a friend of mine is the vice president of World Wrestling Entertainment, WWF, WWE. Some of you, some of you guys know that. And before he moved to Colorado uh, a month ago, he said, Therese, you should be maverick when, you, when you're opening your business. Be a maverick. Be different. Do, make insurance fun. Why can't insurance be like Google? Why can't insurance be like Facebook? So I say, you're right. So um, I came up with the, the idea that every day I'm fighting the good fight so you don't have to. Whether it's with car insurance, personal things that are going on in your life, a death in the family, that's my job. I'm your champion, right? So you've elected me to be your champion. And so our motto at the office is let us be your champion. Let us be the people you depend on when life is going hard. Let us be the ones, hey, this is due. Let, we'll, call, we'll call you on this. We'll take care of it for you. That's all you got to worry about. Let us be your champion. So the belt's title that you'll notice is called the People's Championship. And in our office, we have a mural that is called uh, the, the Hall, of, Hall of Fame or the Hall of Pain, rather. So every time we have a customer that comes in and take a picture with that belt, they get a policy with us. We put them on the Wall of Pain. I wear that belt everywhere, everywhere we go. Nobody else in town has one. So as maverick as I was as a student, which I'm sure you guys right now, did y'all get those tiger tails at the, on the first day of convocation, the helicopter drop? Yeah. So, again, that's a maverick idea, right? Some of you guys were here when they were actually doing the helicopter, if you're a senior, right? Okay. Tammy, my boss. Hey, Tammy, do you mind if I come up with some crazy ideas? Sure. Shoot, Therese. Uh... I think it'd be cool if a helicopter flew over campus on convocation, the first day of school, during the RSO fair, and drops tiger tails out. And then on the thing, we can say, bring your tail to the game, because the first football game is that following week. So if we do that, it's kind of it's kind of cool. Like, oh, they're not expecting this. It happened. Now, I don't know what's happened to it thus far. However, I know that that was, that was taking place for almost four to five years after I departed and went to Christian Brothers. None of that existed, but it took somebody being maverick. It took me knowing who I was and being confident in who I am and not being, not worrying about being judged that I'm young or this young guy at Memphis is trying to change things up. But it takes people like us to change the world. My motto on Instagram is changing the world one day at a time. I'm living that every day. So, yes, we could look at life's adventures and turns as failures. Sometimes you guys may not get the grade that you want. You might not get the job you're looking for when you get out of school. Things won't go right, and that's okay. You're not failing. You're falling forward. You're finding out what you were good at and what the universe is telling you or God is telling you, hey, I didn't have that in store for you anyway. Do this. And I think a lot of times you have to be connected with who you are to understand those things. And so I, I think the motivation that you guys have right now, are, are any, is anybody involved with any extracurricular activities while you're in school? What, what are some of the things you're involved in? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I saw some other hands go up. Nice. Nice. Fantastic, fantastic. So for those of you who didn't raise your hands, what are some of the things that you plan on getting involved with? Because I'll tell you, as, a, as I'm HR, I'm the owner. I'm everything for my job. And when I see resumes, that's what I'm looking at. And I'm not looking at that because I care about what you did or how much you raised. I don't care about that. I know that if you can be in this environment and do those types of things, you can be around other people in a work, work setting. People can depend on you. You're counted on. Those are things. That's, that's what self-awareness does. It helps you understand that you're not in this fight alone. Other people are your resources, and they can help you get where you need to go and vice versa. So understand that you don't have to be a tour guide. You don't have to be Mr. or Mrs. U of M. You don't have to be homecoming king or queen. None of that stuff really matters anyway. It just matters when you're trying to get a job and you're competing with the person who has it. Now, how do you, how do you, how do you combat those things? How do you combat that? Because everybody wants somebody on their team who's somebody they can brag about in the community. Either you're going to be stellar at doing the job itself or you're going to be stellar with people. That's all work is. That's it. It's, it it's, it's what you know and who you know. It's those two common things. And I think um, sometimes who you know can actually get you into places that you can't even imagine or dream or fathom. 
and it means building consistent and favorable relationships for yourself and you being a bridge for other people to utilize you to get where they need to go as well. It's, give, it's a give and take relationship when you, when you assess who you truly are. Um, so what I'd like to do too is make sure that this is very, uh, that we interact with one another. I, I want to open up the floor for you guys because I know that there's, a lots, there's lots of questions and there's lots of things that I don't want to drown out just the typical conversation. This isn't formal at all. I want you guys to have those questions. I've done it all, trust me. It's a lot I've left off the table. But those are the things that have got me to this point thus far. And um, I want you guys to ask any and everything about the transition from school to the workforce. Because I thought I was doing it right. And little did I know it took a lot of hard work for 10 years for me to get to this point to where now God has allowed me to be in a position to steward other people, grow a business, and have my own place where I can pass this on to my kids. I never dreamt of this, ever. I was just content with going to work and making a six-figure salary wherever I was going to go. But it was said to me, why not you just do this for yourself? If I can raise $8 million for Memphis, I can do it for myself. So can you. I'm no different. I had all the disadvantages in the world, every last one, and yet here I am. So I, I know that I want to be a resource for anybody in this room who has questions about opportunities like that so I can help in any way possible. So feel free to ask away. If you don't, I'm going to throw some stuff at you. But uh, feel free to ask away. So is your major exercise science? Okay, okay. So, uh, man, this is, this is going to be a good one because you're probably going to think I'm lying, but I'm not. My major was exercise science when I started out. The reason I changed my major was because I got to that, uh, that uh, AP class and uh, didn't do too hot. Made two Ds. Yeah, yeah, and my fraternity was not pleased with that, so I had to go back and take it a third time. Um, and uh, I think it wasn't that I didn't like the, the classwork and the major. But I, I determined that in my sophomore year, I was like, I like school, but I don't know if I like science that much. And I love science and chemistry, and I loved all those things. But that one aspect, I was like, okay, this is my, this is my time to find out what I want to do with the skill sets I have and the strengths that I have. You like people. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be great at what you're doing. It just means you probably need to focus a little bit more on your, your coursework to make sure that you're able to balance both of those. So what I would deduce is, what is a distraction currently that prohibits you from being able to give, it's not 50-50, it's 100% to being social and 100% to your coursework. You got to be 100% in everything you do. Um, and I know that sounds easier said than done, but take it from somebody who had to be 100% mascot for three years, who had to be 100% student, 100% fraternity president, 100%, I had to do them all at 100 or nothing was going to get done at this school for a period of time. So. Just understand you're not alone and, and don't be discouraged in that because genuinely, like, it sounds, it sounds like how I felt when I was, you know, in that position. Um, that major can be one that can break you. Um, but here's, a, here's another testimony. Um, friend of mine, do y'all watch, have y'all watched uh, Creed 1 and 2? All the Star Wars with Michael Boyega. Um, one of my best friends, his name is Corey Kaye. Corey Kaye is a trainer, and he's Michael B. Jordan's personal trainer. Y'all watch um, Revenge Body. Anybody watch that in your dorm with Khloe Kardashian? He trains the Kardashians. He trains uh, LeBron James and his wife, Savannah James. This dude's 35 years old, man. If I told you right now that he's training all these people, as we, if I called him right now, he'd pick up. He's also, have y'all heard of this girl named Hoops? 
from the flavor of love back in the day? Nobody? Okay, I know it's probably way, way, way. You guys are probably really, really young. But he's training all these people. He learned how to train off YouTube. He was a mailman, gave up being a mailman because he, he had a passion that he wanted to train people. Very social. He learned how to build his body to competitive to a competitive status on his own, took a leap of faith, went to a gym, became a trainer, used what he was learning off YouTube and, and testing on his own body. It worked. He went to a studio set, begged them to allow him to train the cast of the Fantastic Four, that movie that came out in 12, the, the terrible Fantastic Four one, that one. Um, in the course of that, Michael B. Jordan liked what he was doing and saw his body change. I think Michael B. Jordan before this was in a movie called Chronicle, if you guys remember that, where he was flying around. He wasn't, he wasn't built. So in the time from that movie to the time of Fantastic Four, he brought him along. He got along from there to Creed 1 and 2. Then Disney sought him out. We want you to train everybody for the Star Wars cast. We'll pay you $200,000 for all four of those. That's $800,000 that he's made just to do something because, one, he was social. And he didn't give up on that part of who he was. And, two, he just put more effort in and then opened his mouth wherever he went. He's 35, 35, millionaire, 35, didn't go to school. So, so don't be restricted by, oh, my major says I, I made a D and I made a C. I'm not, dude, this, this is just preliminary. There's people out here with masters that can't get jobs that are, that are making $20,000 a year because they can't get work because they're missing something that's important, which in your case, you have that gift. You say right now you're struggling with being social, but man, that's not a struggle. That's who you are. It's now time to bring that over into that coursework aspect and just grind that thing on out. And I promise you, you'll get where you need to be. Work, you, one thing that I can't teach my staff at work is work ethic, grit and grind. You know where we come from. Everywhere you go, Memphis got to be on your back. Everywhere you go, hustle is something I can't teach you. If your parents didn't teach you that and you ain't learned it in four years in school, you might as well just chalk it up to the game. Because at that point, if you don't have it, I'm going to see it when I get ready to hire you. And you'll either try to hope, hopefully you can learn it on the fly or you won't be working for somebody because everybody wants somebody who's going to hustle. Even if it's in the wrong direction, hustle is, 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 is a necessity, even if it's in the wrong direction, right? Because at some point, all we got to do is just turn you back around. And you'll keep hustling back and you'll cover all the ground you just lost because you were going in the wrong direction. Now you're going in the right one. So. You, I, I would say be encouraged, man. Like, you, you're going you're gonna to be fine. Just take time to focus on that coursework. Get the degree and then utilize the degree to help get you to the next platform, right? So any other? That was a good one. I see a grin over here. Ah, I knew it was coming. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Um that answer is twofold. If if I said I had a regret, it wouldn't I, I regret not taking the job experience right away with the Grizzlies because who knows what that could have yielded. If I was, again, if I was working 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction, but I was doing it in the right direction with them, who knows what would have happened by now, right? However, I will say this. Um, one thing I've noticed with this generation, and I'm, I think I'm a part of this generation on the cusp of this and Generation X to some degree, um, hard work, you. Hard work is, ne is necessary. So I can't gauge how good you're going to be at a job if I don't see something on the resume as an employer. Yes, working at a desk is grunt work, and it's not going to be a lot of pay. The one thing your, your, your companies or the jobs you work for, the bosses, one thing they can be responsible for is the things that are outliers that are reasons why you want more pay. So, for example, 
you have a car note, you got insurance. If I if I call a spade a spade, that's not my that's not on me, right? So here's what the job offers. Here's a, here's a responsibility. There's an opportunity for you to move up if you work hard, but all that in between, I can't control what what happens. That's the reason why you need more money, right? That's one that's one reason why some people don't promote. Um, young professionals as fast because they want to see how much are you going to put in before we actually give you this opportunity. That being said, you also know your worth, right? So you know you're worth way more than $10 an hour. And I'm not, not saying that anybody who's working $10 an hour, like you're not worth more too. But sometimes you have to, in, this, in a certain season, you have to take what you can get to get where you're trying to go. Just being honest. Um, I've worked, when I came back to Memphis from Christian Brothers, yes, I love my job, but I was making $16,000 less. That's, that's a lot. That was <laughs> that was daycare. Right. So but I worked the job because I was passionate about it. If you're passionate about hospitality and resort management, you could do that for free. Theore theoretically, you should be able to do that for free. If somebody said, I'm, I'm not going to pay you for a month. OK, I love helping these people. I love servicing these clients. I love the environment I'm working in. I'm OK with that. If you can't say that, then you have to reassess is that major truly where you want to be long term. Now, granted, um, what you do in hospitality resort management also has some lingering. It lingers to what I was doing as an event coordinator with the Alumni Association. So I'll throw this at you. The Alumni Association is looking for all types of people, no matter your age, no matter your qualifications. And they're starting you out at 45,000. OK, I think 50 now they moved up to 50. So you're 22, 21. OK, so job comes open air, you're traveling the country, planning events at hotels, planning events at resorts, which is what that department wants you to do, but you're doing it for 50. But you probably didn't know that existed, did you? So I say that to say too, don't just settle for what you see around you in Memphis because the market here is not gonna yield an environment that's gonna pay you as a young person what you feel like you're worth. So you might have to look, too, at opportunities in other cities or opportunities with other people who are not or, or, or other activities or jobs that aren't associated with just that, but have some underlying um, experience that's translatable or relatable to ho uh, ho hospitality and resort management. So um, I say that to say, you know, you can look at that both ways. I'm not I don't want to direct you to do something, but I will say, you know, you know your worth, that's on one side, and the other side is you also need money. So um, what would you do, i would ask you this, what would you do if you didn't take those jobs? So, okay, let's say the job you found, what, what would you be looking for if you didn't work in that field? HR, gotcha, gotcha. So. You, so your ma is, is HR is that a part of that field now? Okay, gotcha. So there's multiple. There's a lot of places where you can look at HR. Um, I'll tell you this too. Working for the for the city Shelby County government, they have a huge H HR department. And um, in transition, when I was trying to find work again from Christian Brothers, when they got rid of the entire staff. I went and talked with the mayor, and uh, under their HR department was somebody that just do social media, and they were paying that person 65000 I turned that down to come to Memphis just to play on my phone, y'all. That, that never existed. So I say that to say it's still HR. It's $15,000 more than what Memphis is paying for somebody. And with them, obviously, I had a portfolio of things, and I understood algorithms, analytics, because I have to do that for my own business now. So all those things I was going to use for them, I do it for myself. But I say that, say that to say don't just look at one industry and one job because there's so many different things you can do, so many different companies you can work at. And Memphis has a lot of them. But if you don't know who you are and know how to navigate this space very well, nobody's going to tell you about it. You have to be the one to find it. And, and I, that's my passion is now that I know how to help you guys, I want to connect you guys. Um, so before we leave today, you two, since you asked questions, I want to make sure that you guys, I want to introduce you to my friend, Corey, so he can be somebody that you can depend on. So you can't share his number.
right? So it's between we're gonna between us, and then I'm gonna talk to Tammy Hedges about you because Tammy used to teach a class in hospitality resort management. So I'm not sure if you've encountered her or not. I'm not sure if she's still teaching, but um, I'll introduce you to her too. So jobs are important. Who's uh, you said you're a senior too, right? All right. And what are you? What's your plans? Nice. Right. Awesome. 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 Awesome, man. Then, so with you, um, what are you going to get your, you're going to get your master's here, correct? So you want to you want to work here and use that opportunity to pay for that for free. Who else has thought about getting their master's at this school and trying to work a job here so they can pay for it? Or did y'all know that that was something? Y'all didn't know that? What? What is it? This? Come on, Memphis. Y'all leaving out the good stuff. So, yeah, like you just said, that's why I wanted to bring that up. Uh, if you work for the school, imagine the school being its own environment, right? So you got the you have the nation. Obviously, you got our city and you got the school. We got everything here. We got our own hospital. We got our own food service systems. We have our own government, SGA. And then we have the, the teachers have their own kind of government situation here, the professors rather. You have your own administration like our president. It's like its own world. So if the city of Memphis gives benefits to their employees, significant benefits, then why wouldn't the University of Memphis give benefits, right? So you can be a young professional here, love your alma mater, find a job in your field while on campus and they pay for your masters. Why, why should you come out of pocket? I'm spending enough for this undergraduate degree. I'm still in debt and I was, and I got a scholarship to be the mascot. I still owe $18,000. Now that's not a lot in comparison to what y'all are spending today, I'm sure. But to me, that hurts, you know? Now there's also this other thing and I need to interject this because I feel like this goes in with what you said and this is very important. Have y'all heard of the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Plan? Have not heard of that. It's a PLSF, I believe, is the acronym for it. As long as you work in a nonprofit environment or um, if you work for government, pay your loans at an income reduction rate, 10 years, and it can, your, late, your late pay can be 15 days after the due date. <laughs> Just to let you guys know that 10 years, whatever you have left, the government wipes away. Did y'all know that? So how many of you all want to work in education? It applies to you for sure. How many of y'all want to work for nonprofits? How many of y'all want to be police officers or work, work for, in Shelby County government? All that stuff, as soon as you graduate, y'all need to, this, 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 I'm passionate about this, it bothers me because these are ways that help you relieve yourself so you can find out more about who you are. If y'all spend all my time trying to make money, I'm in a rat race, am I not? I don't get a chance to know who I am because I'm trying to make a check every day to pay. So PSLF and then University of Memphis Jobs, they have incentives for you guys and they wipe away your student loans, okay? That's important, really important. Um, So are you, are you just saying in general, like in, the, in the, the interview perspective or just the algorithm for getting the job? So I, I used, for me, I used the benefit that I had at this university to provide that benefit for other people so I could get in their face. So if I'm working over in athletics, oh, I'm trying to get this job or I'm trying to meet this person who knows the owner of this, let me give them some basketball tickets. It's the hottest thing in town right now. Let me find out what I have that's valuable because as a young person, we're always looked over. And I say we because I sometimes, you know, Think about this, like the community that governs our city, they're 50, 60, 70 years old. 
even myself included, they're overlooking me because they're looking at the person who's 40 trying to climb that ladder. When I'm 33 and you're 22 and you can do just the same amount of work, if not better, and you're hungrier. Well, what I'd say is make sure you have a portfolio documenting every single thing you've done. I have three portfolios. I have an undergrad portfolio of every single thing I implemented at the University of Memphis. The, as a student, I have everything that I have from the time I worked at U of M, the, my first go around when I was with Tammy for almost five years, and then I have another portfolio of everything I did at CBU to make that institution better and to make our community better through using those avenues. So when I walk in job interviews, well, when I was, I would sit down and they'd be like, why, you, why do you have all this stuff, Mr. Wilson? Well, because everything I tell you, I can validate. See, everything I can tell you is going to be truthful. I don't know what everybody else has said, but if you ask me a question, I'm going to point to it right in one of these three books. Sure enough, they'd ask that question. Boom. Verification. Proof. Statistics. Numbers. That's what people want to see. Anybody can make up a story about how good they were, but can the people that were interviewing before me or after me prove it? I doubt it. Hey, hey check out my references. David Rudd. Tammy Edges. Coach Norvell, Tom Bowen. See, the point, I'm, the point I'm making is people can't turn down that. They can't turn that down. So the question I would ask you is what steps are you making right now to build that, to build that pipeline for yourself so you can have people that will validate everything you've been doing as a tour guide, as an orientation guide? Who can validate those things so when you get to the next level, you, you can depend on that person to have your back so you can continue to climb up. So um, it, it's important to build up. That's why I said knowing who you are, where you are in this space, knowing who's going to have your back, who's going to help you get there. But also once you get there, what do you need from me? Here, grab my hand. Come on. Like it, all that works together. All that works together. It's not always about, you know, like I said, it's not always about books. People want to people wanna see what you can do. So... And that's where the experience comes in. If you don't have experience, we're kind of, we're just out, we're just out here hoping. And, you know, at that point, it's easier for me to let go of somebody that I'm, that I'm hoping that's going to do well than somebody I know, okay, your track record proves you're going to do well. I just got to make sure I coach you well enough to get you to where you need to be so we can see those results. Because they're tangible because of what you're showing me based on the people I've called, like a Tom Bowen or I'm not sure who your, your boss may be for orientation now or throughout the school, validation, proof, especially as young people. You, can, you don't have to worry about it as much the older you get because now you started to network with so many people because of your job that everybody knows who you are and can validate that this person gives me great service, this person is always there, they're answering the phone, this person always has a word of wisdom for me, they do their job well. It, that will carry over the older that you get. But you have to start now if you're going to hit the workforce and not go ahead and get your master's. And if you are going to stay here and get your master's, it starts then too. Because now you're in a cohort of people, a cohort with people who aren't from Memphis, who don't know you and don't know what all you did here. They could care less. So how do you win those people over to let them know that I'm an asset for you and vice versa? All that stuff is stuff you have to think about. It's, I mean, let, let's, just, let's, just, let's look at this figure, for example. All right. Our, our, our current president was, a, was on reality TV. He could, he could or could not be doing a good job. We're going to leave that to whoever you think. If he's doing a good job, he's doing a good job. If he's not, he's not. Needless to say, he's the president. He got there. Did he have experience? Let's just be honest. Did he have experience being a president? Did, it, did Barack have experience being a president? Did Bush? Maybe, okay, maybe Bush because his dad was president. But the younger Bush. But what, the point I'm getting at is that Nobody had experience, and they got those positions because of who they know. Y'all, when people tell you it's about who you know, it's about who you know. Because who you know is going to invest into you. If you needed money for a business because you just said you wanted to start one, then who you know could be giving you $25,000 to start your business. In my fraternity, a fraternity brother died. I mean, excuse me, his mom died. His mom left him $500,000. He's still a student here, but well, he was a student here at Memphis. Because of that investment she made, which ties into what I do every day with life insurance, he gave, she created an annuity for him. The annuity would pay him out $50,000 at every, every five-year interval. So instantly, when she passed, he got $50,000 to take care of her, uh, her, her burial and, and, and final expenses. The rest was his to get through the rest of his college the last two years he had here. 
he gave one of my other fraternity brothers who had a vision for a business $25,000. You're 20 years old. You gave away $25,000 to this person. But now that person who has that $25,000, who's our fraternity brother as well, can say, I got an investor who gave me twenty five. Can you match it? He gets another twenty five thousand. We're y'all think about this. We're we're young adults. To some degree, in some people's eyes, we're kids still. And he leveraged one person giving him money off of the death benefit of his mom, leveraged that to get more money. Now he has a business. He's one of the top caterers in town. He works here, New York, Atlanta, and Houston. He's been in every award or magazine. He's been top 40 under 40. He's done all this stuff because of who he knew. He knew him personally. He had a deep relationship, personal awareness. This person also knew where they wanted to be, what they wanted to do. These aren't stories I'm blowing up, up your butts. These are things that I can, again, validate and prove. Same thing, I want to be able to, to look at you guys and say, man, I remember he told me he wanted to do that. He went out of his way to make it happen. It's validated. It's proven. He's going to be successful because he had the drive and determination to get to this point. Why wouldn't he keep going? Why wouldn't she keep going? That that is that is the the take and understanding you guys should have. That at some point you want it for yourself. You don't you don't you don't always want to work for for me. You don't always want to work for FedEx or AutoZone or Memphis. You want more for yourself. Everybody does. So. Um. I saw another hand that was up. Was it yours, briefly? Anybody else? Right. So same, same, uh, my mom is, I'm 33, my mom is 48. Y'all can do the math. She was fast. Um, <laughs> she was. And my dad is 50. So uh, I came to school just like you. I did everything my mom said. You got to get to college, get you a degree. You're the first one in the family. Make it happen, knock it out the park. Great, mom. Then I graduate, and I was like, dang, I really don't have anybody to help me once I get here. What's next? In your case, you being a freshman, you still have time. You got to get plugged in and get involved. So hence, did you just hear what he said his, his role is on campus? Well, his, his role. GSA, and what was the other? And emerging leaders, right? Okay, and then you just heard him say he's what? Orientation guy? Did you, did you say Frost Camp? So orientation and tour guide. Okay. So, again, remember when I first started, I said there's people in this room you got to network with. Those two individuals already have access to things that can help you figure some things out with your skill sets and what you're going to be good at when you get here. A lot of times you just got to dive in. So if you let this freshman year go by and another freshman class it comes in behind you and you haven't submitted yourself at what you're going to be good at outside of your coursework. That's how the workforce is. Not, not to say it this way, but we'll just find somebody else. Now you're, ca you're having to catch up on things when you can actually right now today, you're in the building where all the magic happens. Career services, uh, uh, multicultural affairs, SGA, SAC, everything is on the second floor. So what I would ask you to do is and obviously, I'm sure, do y'all know Jackie Rodriguez? Okay, y'all know her? Okay, that's another person. And I know you're not a first gen, but I'm going to talk to you too and give you her information. She works in, I think it's at Clement, where her room is. It's a, it's a first generation program, but what her, her job is to help with retention because a lot of students just don't know. And, it's, and that's nothing wrong with that because you wouldn't know. Who, you haven't been to college before. You wouldn't know this stuff. But dive in. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to be judged. Um, tell people when you need help. If you don't, then nobody knows to help you, and then you're just spinning your wheels, and you're going to fail. And it, then it's really your fault that you fail because you have the resources to, to dig yourself out. But 
what you should do, and, and I'm telling you this just as somebody who's first gen coming here and didn't know, just do everything. If you don't like it, then don't do it. But if you don't give yourself the opportunity to be around different people and to do everything that the school has to offer, when you leave here, nobody cares. You get four years for free. And when I say free, I mean free on mistakes. You make a mistake at State Farm, either I'm going to have to fire you or two, we're going to lose a policy because you messed up somebody's account and they're depending on you to do it right. So school is designed to help make sure that you're coachable and that you can understand how to take instruction, but also you got to understand who you are. The only way you're going to do that who you are part is for you to just say, you know what, every Friday I'm going to take the time to come to the UC and try to dig out what's new on the, on the uh, bulletin board. What can I do? What events can I go to? Then when you get there, it goes a step further. Yes, you're young. So what? Grab a business card, boom, which I'm going to give you all some of mine. I'll pass around. Grab a business card. Hey, my name is so-and-so. This is what I'm doing on campus. Here's my contact information, my Instagram information, my Facebook inf information. All that stuff is on your card, whatever you want somebody to have. Hey, let's stay in touch. I know that that probably seems very formal for somebody who's in college, but it goes a long way. And that's what I was doing. It, that Nobody else is doing it, so it helps you stand out, right? And that's kind of, it seems like that's what you're, trying to do is find out how I can stand out in this space and have somebody help me along this journey until I figure it out. But you have to make sure you're, you're present, you're visible. Um, the company that you keep as well, you're only as good as a, the top five people around you who you talk to and see every day. If they're speaking negative things about life in college and, oh, man, I can't do it, and they're going to their dorms and going to sleep right after school, you're a product of that. So how do you change that up? If my fraternity brothers are always getting into fights at every party, what am I going to naturally do because I'm around them all the time? They fight, I fight. If, if I'm around people who win all day, they win, I win. That's all I hung around was winners. And if I wasn't, I was going to blend in like I was one so I could learn how they could conceptualize what a winner should be. Because my upbringing was different. Family to me was family matters, step by step, the Cosby's. My mom was 15. I have no family. But I knew what I wanted to emulate. And I knew if I found somebody who was emulating something like that, at least I could determine, let me see what th their perspective is on this. It seems like that may be something that you might want to just encounter as perspective. But you'll have to do that by opening yourself up and just jumping in. So any other questions? Everybody good? So um, I, I obviously want to tell you guys thanks for allowing me to come out. This is always a pleasure. Um, it's just I'm deeply rooted to this university. I'm sure you guys are going to be at Cincinnati game and the game tonight, and that belt will be there. So if you see me on the big screen, holler at me. Everybody who I've talked to in here, I'm going to give you a business card. And just think about it like this. Um, at my job, or what I pay the staff at my job, they have a base salary of $24,000. That's what I give you. So you get guaranteed to get $2,000 a month. The rest is your hard work and effort. You're not going to school to work at State Farm. But again, like she said, sometimes you just got to pay the bills and make money. My job at, at where I work is designed to make sure that you guys understand how to be better when you leave my office to go somewhere else. I don't, I don't want young talent to be stifled at $24,000, and I know that. However, you spend time with me, you're going to get groomed so that way wherever you go, you're going to walk out of here either being your own State Farm agent, one, or two, you're going to walk out of here with so much prepared information on how to attack the world that you'll leave better than when you came. So I'm not trying to recruit anybody to my office, but what I'm trying to say is my office is always open. And you guys are going to Gibson's anyway. You're going probably at 11 to get the donuts, six for a dollar, and I'm still at the office churning it out. So if you see a black car in front of that State Farm sign, that means I'm in there. Knock on the door. Let me know if you need something. I, it'd be foolish of me to have all this opportunity and all this, this knowledge and wisdom and not be able to pass it on. It's free. Y'all, this stuff is free. If anybody's charging you to, to give you an answer for something, that's not somebody you need in your corner. This stuff should be free at all times, especially the fact that we have something in common is that we both love the University of Memphis, so we all love the University of Memphis. So um, thank you guys for letting me come out today. And again, I'm going to pass on my cards. The people I told to hang back, y'all hang back. And um, I'm going to give y'all my cell number as well. 
And uh, we'll make some calls to some of these people we need to make calls to. All right? Cool. Thank you.